uh, congruence transformations, okay? Come back to me. Um, so a congruence transformation is a transformation, a rotation, a reflection, a glide reflection, or any combination of the things that we've done um, where your figures remain congruent, okay? And so far, everything we've done, they've been congruent, right? We've been doing, what do we call that? When it doesn't change shape or size? Rigid motion, okay? These are rigid motions that we're going to be doing today because they're congruence transformations, right? They're going to be congruent. Um, today is a lot of trying to come up with what is the transformation that's happening to get me from this figure to this figure over here. Um, how did I get there? What's the rule? Being able to write a rule. Um, so you've seen all of it. It's just maybe you haven't seen it in the combination that you're going to see it in today. Um, so we're going to start with um, this first thing here. It says the composition. Can you tell me what this stands for? A reflection over what? Line N. What does this say? After a rotation of 90 degrees around point P of this figure. Okay, so this is your pre-image, right? This is what we're starting with. Um, will become this figure. This is your image, okay? Um, so this is a congruence transformation. We started with a figure, we uh, rotated it, and then reflected it, and we got this new figure, okay? So the idea now is they used different letters, right? They had um, L, M, N, O for the first one, and then there's the G, H, J, K for the second one. We have to figure out what matches up, okay? Um, so if I rotate L, M, N, O 90 degrees, remember we always go counterclockwise. So that would make this new figure, um, the O would be right here. Right? My L would be right there, my M would be right here, and my N would be right there. Then it says that figure reflected. It flipped over the line N. Okay? So what we're trying to figure out is what points match up. Um, so O matches up with what on the new one? K, okay, and I'm just going to write in parentheses O next to that, just so you can see the relationship, okay? My G matched up with L. H is the same as M, and J is your N, okay? If you need to do that to figure out what is what, feel free to write letters next to letters, just so you can see what's matching up. That's fine. Um, the question, the first question, is which angle pairs have equal measures? Well, we just listed which ones are the same, right? So we're going to say angle G is congruent to angle L. Angle H is congruent to angle M. Angle J is congruent to angle N. And angle K is congruent to angle O. Okay, and if you look up here, they told us what matched up. You see that? If LMNO is going to map onto GHJK, did we really have to go through this whole process? No, no I want you to see it because I want you to understand what's going on. But really, you could have said L with G, M with H, right? First letter with first letter, second with second, third with third, fourth with fourth. Does that make sense? Just how we've always done it with congruent figures. You have to match up the corresponding parts. Um, so then it says, which sides have equal lengths? And again, you can refer back to the picture if you want. I would just refer up here. The first two letters, LM, will be congruent to the first two letters here, GH. Right? Then MN would be congruent to what? MN is congruent to HJ. So the two in the middle with the two in the middle, okay? And so on and so forth. Um, I'm not even gonna name all four of them right now because I feel like that's kind of a no-brainer. You just match up the corresponding parts, you say which segments are congruent. I'm just going with two for that one, okay? Um, 
Any questions on that? Just matching up corresponding parts. Okay. Um, then we're going to say two figures are congruent if and only if there's a sequence of one or more rigid motions, right? If we keep everything the same size and the same shape, and then we map one figure onto another and that figure onto another one, you can do it as many times as you want. As long as we keep them rigid motions, your figures will be congruent, okay? So we're gonna look at this picture. It says, which pair of figures is congruent? And then write a sequence of rigid motions that maps one figure onto the other. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this picture. Um, how many different congruence transformations do you see? There are three, yes. So a triangle that will map onto a triangle, a trapezoid that will match onto a trapezoid, and a segment that will map onto a segment, okay? They did not tell us what direction to go. So you could do it and I could do it and we would get totally different answers and we'd both be right because they never said you have to go from this figure to that figure, right? Um, so let's just do this. We're going to start with, where do we want to start? Let's start with the triangle. Okay, so I'm going to start with triangle DEF. Okay, and that's going to map onto some other triangle. So you have to match up the corresponding parts and you have to write the rule for the transformation that's happening, okay? Um, on this one, the rule I do is just a one-stepper. It's not a composition of transformations. It's just one transformation that will keep that figure congruent to the other. Does anyone see what you can do to triangle DEF? What'd you do, Luke? Um, so you rotate 180 degrees on point zero zero. Yeah, from the origin, right? If I rotate from this point right here, and you can see this, if you take your iPad and you rotate your iPad 180 degrees, look at where those, in my case, the blue dots end up. They'll be exactly where the N NLM dots were, okay? Um, so if that's helpful, just do the rotation. You should see where they fall. Um, so we would say the rule is a rotation what goes next? 180. 180 degrees. So you say how many degrees? And then what? Zero. O, point O, the origin, right? Um, or you could write the point zero, zero is fine too. Um, of triangle, if I say D, E, F, that's gonna map onto what? That's L, M, N. D corresponds to L. E corresponds to the M. F corresponds to the N. Okay, so triangle D, E, F maps onto triangle L, M, N. Do you see it? Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to erase all those markings. And... Try the next one. You want to do the trapezoid or the segment? Trapezoid. trapezoid. Okay, so this one has a lot of options, a lot of options that you could do, and there, there's a lot of correct options that you can do, okay? Um, tell me what you would do. Let's see. Who wants to go? Annika, you want to try it? What would you do? A glide reflection, okay. Where would you slide? What? Sure, uh, a, a vector, like, yeah. So are you taking um, W, X, Y, Z and sliding that one? Yes. Okay. So if you slide that, first of all, negative six is going to move you six to the left. Yeah. But if you look, this piece right here is the same as this piece, not the same as that piece, right? Mm -hmm. 
So we don't want to slide it left right now. Well, that's not true. You can slide it left. You can't slide it that far left. Um, you could do that. If we're going to start up here, you could go one to the left and one, two, three, four, five down so that your point Y would end up right here. Okay. You would reflect over what? X equals negative one. Okay, so if I'm gonna take that WXYZ figure, um, we are going to do a translation, leave some room at the front, because remember this is, this is you gotta do your dot for after. Um, so it's a translation of one to the left, so negative one, and five down of WXYZ. Okay, um, so that's gonna move us down here. I'm just gonna freehand this. You don't need to draw this in. Okay, so we're there. Then we can take that figure and we can flip it. So a reflection, remember that's a capital R for reflection, over the line, X equals negative one. Okay, so we had to slide it, negative one, negative five. Did anyone do a different one? Because there's plenty more options. What if we didn't, what if we only went down five? What are we reflecting over if we go down five? Um, X equals negative half. Negative one half. So if you, if you just went down five, then you could have reflected over this line, right? X equals one half. Um, I tend to just stay away from the fractions with reflections, but you don't have to. It's not wrong. If you like that, go for it, okay? Um, then the last thing we need to say is this maps onto, so if I did W, X, Y, Z, what is your combo down here? A, B, C, J. A, B, C, J. A, B, C, J. Okay. Um, okay, so that's the trapezoids. I'm going to erase all my junk again, and then we're going to do the segment. Okay, so segment wise, what are we gonna do? I want someone new. Callie, you haven't given us one today. Um, you can do a translation of two negative nine. Two negative nine, let's see. So you're starting at PQ then, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine would be a translation, right? It's a slide. So we would do a capital T for translation of two negative nine of segment PQ would map onto segment HG. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay, those are what we're calling congruence transformations. Um, it was two figures that we transformed, right? Um, and they were identical figures. So when it says do a congruence transformation, it's just saying, how did you get this figure to, to lie perfectly on top of that other congruent figure that we were working with? Okay, congruence transformation. Okay. Two more, and then we're done. Um, so triangle JQV, okay, that means we're starting with the black is congruent, oh no, it doesn't. The next part does though. Um, is congruent to triangle EWT. So J corresponds to E, Q corresponds to W, V corresponds to T. That's huge, okay? Let me show you something. Um, they're asking for a congruence transformation that does this. JQV, J to Q to V, you're naming your triangle counterclockwise. How are you naming EWT? Clockwise. Clockwise. Okay, that should be like light bulb moment for you. There is a reflection somewhere, right? When you name them in opposite directions, there is a reflection. You got to figure out what kind of reflection. Is it just a straight reflection? Is it a glide reflection? 
Um, what did that look like? But just know when you name your letters in opposite directions, there is a reflection somewhere, okay? Um, so let's take a look at this. What would map the black onto the blue? So stop and take a look real quick, keeping in mind J corresponds to E. Actually, let's do this because I'm going to make a mess. Okay, so E and J correspond. V corresponds to T. And Q corresponds to W. Okay, so those are the parts we have to get to match up with each other perfectly in this process. Um, try to write down a congruence transformation for this. See if you can write it down. Um, from what you're seeing here. Keeping in mind, you have an opposite orientation. So that's gonna have a reflection. Weston, did you get one? Did you get it? No. Like you're certain what you have is not it? Or you just didn't even do it? I just don't understand it. Okay. Ash, did you get it? I know. Kayla, did you get it? Not there yet. Audrey, did you get it? You want to try it? What'd you get? Let's check it out. So she moved negative two, five, one, two, three, four, five. So Q moves on to W, okay? So she translated it, right? She shifted it. Um, and then she reflected over X equals negative one. Does that work? That is a good answer. Good job. Anyone get something different? What'd you do? Um, reflection over the y-axis after a translation of 0, 5. Anybody else get that one? Is that what you were going to say, Copper? Yeah. And Callie? Is x equals 0 also okay? Yep. If you said x equals 0 instead of the y-axis, that's totally fine. Um, so this one, you're translating just up 5, which would put you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right here, right? So that shifts the whole thing up. And then you flip over the y-axis, totally fine, or the line x equals zero, okay? So those are both great answers. Anyone get something different than that? I feel like those are the most uh, basic versions, but you could do something else. I just put it down. I don't remember what the first one was, how it is in You put what? I put the, I moved the triangle down. Oh, yeah. So just pay attention to what they ask you up here. It says JQV has to map onto EWT. So we have to start at JQV and go up to the other. I know. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Um, okay. Questions on that? Okay. Try this one, and then we'll be done. A congruence transformation that maps NAV onto BCY. Pay attention to how they're named. Do they have same or opposite orientation? So NAV and BCY. Are those same or opposite? Those are opposite orientation, which means there's going to be a reflection in this. Okay? Give it a go. And again, you have options here. There's not just one right answer. There are several you could do.
Did you get it, Tara? No. You sure? You just not want you to tell me your answer? No, I just don't understand. Okay, so where could you think about this? N corresponds to B, right? V corresponds to Y. And then A, oops, so this point here corresponds to C. So we're trying to figure out how can I shift this and flip it or rotate it or whatever of our transformations that we do, how could I get it so that those parts match up, right? So N with B and Y with V. Okay, color coding, match up the colors. Hopper, what'd you do? I did, um, so you move it five to the right. So T, um, which will be the second thing, right? So five to the right would be a positive five. Yeah. Oh, and then that's it. And then so five zero. Yeah, five, zero. Okay. So reflection over the x-axis. Does that work? No. I mean, it, it works to get BCY onto NAV, right? So it's not terrible, but it's not 100% right. We want to get NAV onto BCY. So whatever they give you first is where you start. So we need to shift left, right? Um, so if you had said a translation of negative five, zero, right? That would move that to the left. And then over the x-axis, that works. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyone do something different? Luke, what'd you do? Um, so So I did rotation 90 degrees on point C after translating it negative one, negative four. If you do a rotation and a translation, you won't have opposite orientation, uh, right? You have to do a flip somewhere if you have opposite orientation. Did anyone do something different? What if you had, let's see, what if you translated one, two, three, four, five left and two down? So negative five, negative two, then what would you reflect over? Negative, negative one over y. y equals negative one. Okay, so you could have done this also. Um, they're both correct. I don't care which one you do. Pick one that works, okay? Any questions on that? 